It feels so good to be sitting down chatting with you guys right now because this is the first official vlog style content that I've done with you guys since I've announced the pregnancy because we did the announcement video, it's like a sit down video. Same thing with the first trimester symptoms and signs video that I just posted for you guys and thank you so much for the love on that video. I'm glad you guys are enjoying that. I did share some personal information there that I hadn't shared with you guys before. Thank you so much for the feedback there. So go check out that video if you have not seen it yet already. And now we're here. We're sitting in the room that will be the nursery. Current fixation, strawberry banana smoothies. This time I put a whole avocado in there as well. Just a half a banana. I did protein powder that's like four mamas. And then I did Greek yogurt, coconut water, a nice mix of deliciousness. And I've been loving smoothies like that. I've been loving them midday, especially. I feel like we have so much to catch up on because I haven't picked up a vlog camera and talked to you guys like this. And I feel like we catch up the best when I'm vlogging because those sit down videos, I can catch you up to speed on what's been going on. Like the announcement in the first trimester and stuff like that, but it's harder to keep you guys up to date in the moment. So that is where I do these vlogs. I'm definitely coming into the nesting phase <laughs> of this whole journey. I'm gonna show you guys just some little bits that I've picked up recently. Look at these little pants. Ah. I've picked up some stuff on my own and then Alex and I went together and oh, I'll show you the little pants that he picked out. He was, was having a heart attack over these pants, his reaction. So we had to get them. But to catch you up to speed on just a couple of things, we moved the bed out of this room, which is a big step because you guys know, if you've been watching my vlogs, that we have been working on the guest cottage and that bedroom is finally finished or it's in a good place. It's in a usable place. And so we finally moved the bed out of this room over there and it has freed up this space, which is very exciting. This is by far my favorite room in the house. I'm going to get the rug in here washed and cleaned. It's lovely, it's 100% wool, and it's just the prettiest rug that I am likely going to be using for the nursery. I have no idea what design I want to do, but I will bring you guys along with me. I'm in my nesting mode. This is my nesting mode. That drawer is going to leave because I just want a different system. I want something that I can change diapers on, like the height of it, and that's just too high. That painting will go out to the sleep out. So there's several things that need to change. I mean, everything needs to change in here, really, and we have to add a lot of things to this room, of course, but right now it's empty and it's just a lovely space. It gets so much light because there's two windows in this room, which none of the rooms in the house have two windows. And we just had some workaways leave. They were these two girls from Sweden. They were lovely and they helped us with so much in the garden because weeding and planting and things like that, it's a little bit more difficult than usual for me right now. So it was really nice to have workaways here. It is essentially like a travel program where travelers are looking for like farm stays to put in a little bit of like countryside work into a little farm little farm stay and you give them food accommodation and all that sorts of stuff and they helped with the lamb which they loved they spent a lot of time out with lucy that is her name she is our first girl of the flock as you guys know we have the three musketeers there are three boys and this year we got an orphaned girl lamb. Our neighbor found her by herself without mama out in a pasture nearby, brought her to us and we have been bottle feeding her for like a month now. She's been with us for a while. So she's grown quite a bit. If you're following me on Instagram again, you definitely saw all of this, but some of you guys don't use Instagram and that's totally fine. So I'm just updating you guys here. I will show you later the guest cottage where we've kind of gotten there because there's some big updates over there. And the more we update over there, the more we can come over here and start updating over here. So it's kind of like two 
sort of transformation, definite renovation on the cottage end. But here it's more gonna be just like a transformation. We might do a little bit of paint and I have some ideas and Alex and I have been talking about it, but that will be in a different video. For now, let's talk about some of these cute little beds. By the way, I just posted on Instagram. Sorry, I don't mean to keep mentioning it if it's something that you don't use, but if you are on Instagram, I just posted the diaries of the first trimester. So all these different photos of <laughs> different moments in the first trimester. And the last video is my mom's reaction <laughs> to the pregnancy, which was the best thing ever. Unfortunately, my camera did not record her audio, which I'm so bummed about, but her reaction is still like, she's so <laughs> just like in it that you don't even need to hear her sound because um, she, her reaction was just priceless and kind of my favorite thing ever. So if you're interested in seeing that, go check out that post on my Instagram. But now let's get into some of these cute little bits that we have going on. So yeah, these were Alex's just absolute favorite thing ever. He picked them out. He also picked out the little like bit that goes with it. We chose long sleeve because like you can never, I feel like long sleeve here in New Zealand is the way to go. She is going to be a February baby, which is an end of summer baby here in the Southern hemisphere. <laughs> Sorry if that confuses those of you who are in the Northern Hemisphere, but we are on totally different seasons down here. So right now we're coming into summer, it's spring here. And so my pregnancy will actually be throughout most of the summer, like the end of my pregnancy, the end of the second trimester and the third trimester, and then she'll be birthed the end of summer. And so then we'll be going into autumn. So I'm kind of thinking more about warm clothes more than anything, because even here, what they say here is hot is actually not that hot to me in my eyes because I'm from the desert in the US and it gets real hot. If you know about Nevada heat, Arizona heat, California heat, especially inland California, like removed from the coast. Woo, that's hot. How flippin' cute is this color? I'm trying to not get everything pink. Also, I'm wearing pink. Also, I should show you guys my little butt. So I'm 22 weeks and one day. Yes, yesterday we hit 22 weeks. It's funny because when people comment on the size of my bump, some people are like, oh my gosh, you're big for 22 weeks. Like, are you sure you're not having twins? <laughs> and then some of the people will see my bump and they're like, that is such a small little tiny bump. So it's all about perspective. Everybody thinks something different. And I don't know if we should be commenting on the size of bumps anyways, because I feel like if someone says it's too small, then you're like worried, like, is my bump too small? And then if somebody says you're too big, then you're kind of like, am I big? <laughs> so I just feel like in general commenting if someone like the size of someone's bump, whether or not, I don't know. I think it's okay to comment about someone's bump, but maybe like just leaving out the size thing is probably better because it can make people worry or feel huge or whatever it might be. That being said, baby is the size of a corn on the cob. <laughs> the vegetable thing is so funny to me. But yeah, she's the size of a corn of a cob, corn, of, corn on the cob as of yesterday. So she's in there just being a corn on the cob. A lot of other moms have told me that the two-way zipper is the best. So a zipper up at the top and a zipper down below so that you can have like access on whichever area you need to for changes and stuff like that. How cute is this? Another long sleeve. This one has the little like button clip things, which I've heard people don't love, but we will see how I feel about them. And that comes with like these little pants that have little built-in socks. Socks are something that I need to get for her because I know I wear socks constantly in New Zealand, so pretty sure she will be wearing socks constantly too. This is something Alex fixed, picked out because he loves birds. And so he was just like, this is so cute. We go over to our 
neighbor's house, our friend Rosa, she has two and they, her kids wear these a lot, like these little like swaddle pajama situations. I don't know what they're called. I think they call it a sleep sack. It's kind of like a sleeping bag, but a pajama version for babies. <laughs> this cardigan I showed on Instagram. It's so cute. It reminds me of Easter, like the yellow and the lavender. Oh my goodness, too cute with these little yellow pants. Like, could you, can you, can't you just see it? Like, oh my gosh. And I got her this soft, adorable little jelly cat bunny. Jelly cats are all the rage. Whenever I see moms with like toddlers or babies, whatever, they all have jelly cats. So soft it is. But Lanka has already taken a liking to this as well. I walked into the living room and he had this in his mouth like that. And I was like, no, not for you. But then at the same time, I don't blame him at all because this looks exactly like his plush toy. So if anybody has tips on how to teach your dog the difference between baby's plush toys and his plush toys, let me know in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that it's a lost cause and you're just gonna have to hide the baby's toys. Or some people have told me that actually when the baby's born, the dog just knows what's his and what's hers. It's nothing to worry about. So I've heard two sides of it. Some people have said, it's impossible. There's nothing you can do about it. And some other people have said, they actually are pretty good at just knowing once the baby comes because the smell is on there and he's like really good at not messing with any of our stuff. So we'll see if he's smart enough to know what's baby's and what's his or if he even cares. Who knows, it'll all just be a process, a learning process for everyone. She's giving me little kicks right now. Yes, I am talking about you. We are going to head outside and feed little Lucy. I'll show you guys how I make her milk replacer. I use this big old bag. This is kind of the bag that I use every year when we get an orphaned lamb. And then I'm gonna feed her and then I'm gonna head into the garden and grab some lettuce because I wanna make a salad for lunch. So what I do is I warm up the water on the kettle. I warm her water up to 50 degrees Celsius. I actually don't know what it is in Fahrenheit because our little kettle does Celsius. And then I do 70 grams of milk replacer. So I use this little funnel thing. Give it a little shaky shake. And so one of these is 40 grams, and then I do another 30 grams to make it 70, because that is what it says on the package to do. So she'll be on this amount of milk replacer four times a day until she gets weaned. So I put the funnel in, and then I bring it, so I put the funnel back in, and then I pour till we get to 350 milliliters. She was just out there buying, so she's very ready. Give it a little shake to mix the powder and the water. Turns into a little milk, and then let's go feed her. She gets very excited when she sees me coming over. gotten so much bigger over the last month. It's crazy how quickly they grow. Lucy. She scratched her little nose on the fence because she kind of like is constantly looking for milk. And so she gave herself like a little fence burn on the top of her nose. <laughs>
Yum. We've got spinach, lettuce from the garden, apples, avocado, tomato, red onion, balsamic, olive oil, lemon. My mouth is watering. Let's take a quick break and talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is BetterHelp. If you watch my channel regularly, this is not the first time you've heard about BetterHelp because I talk about them a lot as it's something that I have used in my life for several years now. I have a call with a therapist regularly and it has been something that has really helped me through a lot of the moments in my life, the ups, the downs, and everything in between. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you unbiased and helpful advice. Starting therapy can be hard. Sometimes you can't find the right therapist for you in your area. And some people find the face-to-face -face interaction of therapy uncomfortable. With BetterHelp, you have options in whatever you feel the most comfortable with. So if you wanna do a phone call, you can do it that way. If you'd rather do a video call, you can. Or you can even do it over messaging if you prefer that. BetterHelp has over 30,000 therapists in their network, which means that they have a wide range of expertise for you to choose from. So what you're looking for might not be available in your area, but with BetterHelp, it likely is. To get started, you fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs. And then in most cases, you get matched with a therapist within 48 hours or less. You'll be able to schedule therapy sessions at a time that is the most convenient for you. If the therapist you get matched with first doesn't feel like the right fit, it's okay. It's really common. It actually happened to me, the nice thing about BetterHelp is that you can switch your therapist at any time for no additional cost and you don't have to look into insurance or like check if somebody's in your network or anything like that. My outlook on therapy is we spend so much time on wellness, like at the gym and the food that we're eating. I feel like our mind needs to have the same attention. If you're interested in therapy, definitely check out the link that I left for you all in the description box, or you can go to betterhelp.com slash rad. Clicking the link I left for you in the description box or going to the link you see up on the screen helps support this channel, but it also gets you 10% off of your first month with BetterHelp. So that's betterhelp.com slash rad. Now let's get back into the video. It is stunning out here right now. It smells so good. This is our crab apple tree and it just blooms so beautifully this time of year. Look at all the bees. The bees are out because all the flowers are out. Ah, it's so nice out. I just love spring. I love spring. And I know, I know you can't relate if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, and I know a lot of you are watching from the States, but maybe you could just live vicariously through us transitioning to warm weather while you are transitioning to cold weather. Autumn is also one of my favorite. I'd say spring and autumn are my two favorite because I love that transition. I love the change of going to warm weather, seeing plants come back to life, seeing lambs, seeing the sunshine shining through more and things just coming back to life. But then I love autumn because it's a time of like going inward and being cozy and it's a beautiful time of year as well. So the Three Musketeers got haircuts yesterday. Our neighbor came over and helped Alex shear them. She did most of the work, but she also taught Alex, <laughs> which was great. He got to try on one of them, and I'm really happy that we finally got them cut. They're shorn, they're looking good because the weather is warmer. Today is like the first day of actual warm weather so we timed it perfectly because it actually was getting quite cold that night and I was like ah you know their coats being on right now is still good because they're staying warm but if they would have had like especially Wolson he had such a huge coat of wool on and I was just like it's about to get hot and he's not gonna be happy with that on so we cut them yesterday and they're looking so cute. It is time for me to go change into some warmer clothes because we're gonna go play some rugby. Well, I will not be playing any rugby, but this man wants to play some rugby and... It's touch. It's just touch to rugby. Clarify. It's touch rugby. It's so like nobody will be football. Nobody will be tackling each other, but we did it last year and I ate it. 
last year I was like running so fast and just like tripped over myself. So I will I have also scored a try last year, but didn't know that you needed to touch the ball to the ground. Whereas like in American football, if you're in possession of the ball and you cross the line, it's a touchdown. So we have some explaining to do. In America, we have American football, which we now call American football because if you're American, by the way, everywhere else in the world calls football. Everywhere. Soccer. Soccer is football, okay? <laughs> it makes a lot more sense too because like in yeah. soccer, you're using your foot all the time. Yes. You can't even use your hands. Whereas in yes. American football, the only time you actually use your foot is at kickoff and for a field goal. But I think Americans don't think about the fact that Other countries football. exist. And that football just exists in our country. <laughs> Rugby is to New Zealand and Australia and a couple other countries what American football is to us in America. But now, us... In New Zealand. In New Zealand. We subscribe to <laughs> the All Blacks as the best team in the world. Uh, and They're really fun The to All watch. Blacks, that's New Zealand's national rugby team. Right now, it's the Rugby World Cup. Um, and New Zealand just advanced through a really crazy, insane quarterfinal game against Ireland, which was the number one ranked team in the world. New Zealand was currently, I think, four, uh, number four. Now they're going into the semifinals this weekend, but we're not playing professional rugby. We're playing touch rugby with friends in a little three week long, every Wednesday tournament. And I will be on the sidelines Cheers. babysitting. Cheerleading babysitting and, babysitting. and cheerleading. Okay, great. Wonderful. I'm gonna babysit my neighbor's kids while she plays. It's super fun. I wish rugby was a more of a thing in the United States. We have the athletes, we could be great at it, but um, yeah, I mean, just if you're not familiar with rugby, go onto YouTube, search like All Blacks Best Clips, and welcome to the black hole. <laughs> Alex is obsessed with the rugby That's now. <laughs> Last night was fun. Alex had the time of his life playing rugby. I am currently having some of this Chobani Greek yogurt with passion fruit down at the bottom. It's so good. It's kind of been my favorite thing to snack on recently. The crunch of the passion fruit is so good. This morning I have been catching up with laundry because we had two big baskets full of laundry and I kept putting it off because I was waiting for a nice day because moving to New Zealand has turned me into a girl that will only hang dry laundry. I honestly despise the dryer now and I think it's because I just see the benefits of hang drying clothes as opposed to putting it in the dryer. It just lasts longer, your clothes feels fresher, it looks better when it comes out. Like it, it, when you pull it out of the dryer versus hang drying it all day in the sunshine. I am very well aware of the fact that hang drying your laundry is not a new concept. Many countries do it regularly and many countries only hang dry their laundry. In the United States, it is not as common practice as it is here in New Zealand to hang dry your laundry. In the States, we use our dryer pretty regularly, with the exception of sometimes hang drying. But there are areas in the United States, believe it or not, where it is illegal to hang dry your laundry. When I think back to living in California and the fact that we had perfect weather pretty much every single day, I just asked myself why I wasn't hang drying my laundry more. We definitely had a line out in our backyard, but for some reason it's in the culture in America to just throw it in the dryer. Not sure why, it saves on electricity, it saves your clothes to just hang dry and that's just, I digress. I will spare you from my <laughs> hang dry laundry preaching and let's go to the guest cottage to see the updates over there. How exciting is this? And how ugly are these socks? <laughs> these are Alex's like thermal mountain socks and my feet are always cold so I'm always wearing ginormous socks of some sort and they fit into my gumboots perfectly. Until the weather is full-blown summer, 
I will be in ugly socks around the house. That being said, look at this floor. Ah, they're so pretty. I'm very happy with the color that we chose. And then we ended up, I think I told you guys, but we ended up going with the color Bud for the feature wall. And then this is like a cream. So this is the living room space of the guest cottage. You guys are propped up on the little kitchenette that we literally just took the old kitchenette that there was and revamped it, like just made it look a little bit better or a lot of it better because it was not very good. I'll turn you guys around so you can see it. It looks a little bit scary right now, but there is a plan for this area and it looks a lot better than it used to look. I don't think I ever showed you guys a before because there was just too much going on, but Alex just completely reconfigured this. He added a like vinyl marble up top here because this was just hideous. There's a ton of like, storage stuff that we're gonna be putting away, obviously. So later on, you'll be able to see it better. This is a rod that's gonna go across the top here. And then this actually matches me right now, which is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> but I love like this checker print. Anyways. This is going to go across like this, and there's like three panels of it. And that will be, I'm gonna probably have to get this hemmed or hem it myself, and just kind of go like this with it. That's gonna be covering that space, which I think looks really nice with the color of the floors. And then we're going to do two floating shelves above the kitchenette. Again, it looks crazy right now because there's a lot going on at the top. But then we move into, that's the kitchenette that you just saw, and then this is the bathroom. It is elevated. It was just the way that this building was already built. I think that they did it, well I know that they did it because of plumbing. I think that they already had the foundation laid and they wanted to add a bathroom on, and so they lifted it to do all the plumbing of the bathroom. So we just, went with it, but we were racking our brain about how to make a stair that kind of flows nicely with the flooring. Alex figured it out and he did such a good job. It literally looks professional. He used timber and then he used extra bits of the flooring to add on top so that it's just like smoothly goes into the bathroom. So we're also going to put these like little night lights that are motion sensors so that if somebody's going to the bathroom at night they can see the stair and they won't fall um so that is the bathroom we did a really nice like hexagon tile it's marble in there which is an addition that we added we didn't have any flooring it was just wood when we moved here and then when you walk out of that living room space that we were just in there's a door and then you enter into this room which is the bedroom there's lots of art here just kind of hanging around until we decide where it's going to go. I don't like the green on green, so I'm gonna get new sheets. I liked the sage when it was in the guest room that is now going to be the nursery because there was no feature wall there that was a sage color, but now that we have this on the wall, I'm gonna switch it up and we're going to figure out where these art pieces go. But one of the coolest things about this room is the projector that you see up on that wall. It is such a big screen on this wall. And then there's a fireplace there. I'll show you guys in a second. But first I just wanna show you like the little side lights. That one's for up there, but we have little built-in nightstand lights for reading and you can control them here, but you can also control the main light here. So if you wanna turn off the main light when you're in bed and then turn on your side lamp, you can. And then Alex restored these. I bought them at an antique shop and they were sort of this like purpley, really cute like cottage, kind of like distressed look. And we felt like this room felt a little bit more modern and it needed black. So at first I told Alex, I was like, we need to paint them black and we need to spray paint the handle gold. And he was like, what? And I was like, trust me because of the black hardware. And he did it and it looks really nice because even the fireplace is really modern and black, which I'll show you in a second. So that's what's going on over there. Then you can come over here, 
and then obviously there's this other light. We need to think of a way to cover this. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little electric box. Anyways, I'm gonna grab these remotes so I can show you what's going on on this wall. Hopefully you guys can hear me because I'm just like so far away from the camera, just walking all around. I've just grabbed all the remotes that we have for this room. First off, we have this fireplace, which is just a wall heater, but it looks like a cozy fireplace. So you can turn on the heat here to like lower or higher, or you can use like the dimmer to dim this. And then you've got your projector. It's daytime right now, so you won't be able to see it perfectly. And it kind of makes this like startup noise that you're hearing right now. But then once you play the movie, you can't hear it at all. And then this one just controls like for Prime or for Disney, Netflix, whatever you want. The thing is, is like we've had this projector because we were using a projector in our house versus a TV. We had this big pendant light in our living room, so we couldn't mount our projector up on the wall. We totally would have used this in our house if we could have. So instead, we decided to get a frame TV in our house, and then now we are using this projector out here, which I feel like is perfect if you're like traveling or you're a guest and you're staying somewhere. It just feels like quaint and cozy. So you can lay on the bed, watch a movie on the projector. At night, it feels like a movie theater and it's so big and it's so cool to have like the little fireplace underneath it. This area that we live in is a dark sky reserve. So it's one of the areas in the world where it's so dark because there's not a lot of light pollution. We don't have any street lights on our country road or anything like that. And so the stars here at night are incredible. So I was a little bit nervous about putting any type of like TV or projector situation in here because I was like, oh, they have to go and have like a little fire outside and look at the stars. And so I'm gonna recommend to everybody who comes to visit us, like you have to sit outside and look at the stars and then you can watch a movie on the projector. I moved the camera over here so that you guys could see the view from this wall to the window because I wanted to show you guys this shelf at the very top of the cottage. It's one of my favorite features of this building. It goes across the entire wall, so through the living room as well, all the way down. And I just can't wait to put books and plants along there. Like I just want a bunch of plants, a bunch of books, just all along that shelf because it just adds a different dimension. It makes you kind of like look up. I feel like it makes the space look taller and I just think it's an extra little bit that you don't normally see, but it's nice for a building that's a newer building. It's definitely not like an old quaint like bungalow, like our actual house, but I like that there's like a little bit of character there with that because I like to find character in a space wherever I can. Look at this space. It feels so much better, you guys. There was old carpet that was like moldy and gross and smelt bad. It smelt musty in here before. Now it smells like fresh and clean and new. And it was all like stark white walls that had like holes that needed to be patched everywhere. And the fresh paint, the new floor. I have to give it to Alex on this one because I got pregnant and was not helping him at all with anything because I couldn't be in this space. It was just like a construction zone with like paint and wood and nails and all sorts of different things everywhere. And I did help design, like I picked out the floor and the paint colors and things like that, which I always love to do, but I wasn't able to help with anything really, which we did a lot of the work together in the main house because I wasn't pregnant at the time, but he definitely did this on his own which I have to give it to him because he did have help from friends, of course, but all of this has been like DIY and slow progression. But I think when I got pregnant, it kind of pushed us in the butt to really get it done because we wanted to have that room inside the house free. We definitely have to add more art pieces and like the towel rack to the bathroom and art pieces around the house and I have a lot of books and plants to collect for the shelf that lines the entire cottage. But other than that, we are in the home stretch. It feels so good to finally be 
at this juncture in this journey. When friends and family come from the States, they can stay in their own little cottage. It's super private. There's a lot of plants all along it and there's a good distance from our house. So like, it's just very private and it's its own little like peaceful cottage, its own little garden and it's just really lovely. I've learned a lot of patience over the last couple of years because it's so easy to want everything done, everything renovated, everything the way you want it to be right away. But it just doesn't work that way, especially when you're doing it a lot on your own. It's just, it takes time. So that's where we're at today and I'm happy to be where we are today. So thank you all for watching. I will see you very soon in my next video.